and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and your descendants. Also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and the east, to the north and the south. And in you and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. May the Lord bless the reading of his word to our hearing. And for all of us gathered, I'm speaking on this subject your crisis is a door to the supernatural. Your crisis is a door to the supernatural. And there are a couple things that we can say about this text. Firstly, not all crises are the same. For the, belie for the unbeliever, crises bring pain and confusion and very few learn from it. Whereas for the believer, crisis brings purpose Amen. in addition to pain and confusion. Amen. You have to see that nothing happens in the life of a believer by chance. Amen. This crisis in the life of Jacob wasn't an accident. It was a tool that God was using to drive him to that place. A place that represented a crucial juncture in his journey towards his destiny. And this leads me to the first thing I want us to take away from this text. And it's this. God can use your crises to drive you to certain places that unlock your destiny. I said... God is able to use your crises, your challenges, your difficulties to drive you to certain places that unlock your destiny. In verse 11 of our text it says, or remember, he was on the run. It says, so he came to a certain place and stayed there all night because the sun had set. God is able to use your challenges to drive you to places that are crucial to fulfilling your destiny. These places are sometimes difficult. They're sometimes dry. They're sometimes hard. But they also open you up to new doors of possibility. This is what we see unfolding in the life of Jacob. Because as we encounter him here, he's on the run. He had swindled his brother Esau for the second time by stealing his birthright. Imagine, he, Isaac is almost ready to die. His eyes are dim, so he can't see properly. And he had always liked Esau, the firstborn. Now, they were twins. But Esau was the firstborn. He came out of the womb first. And so Isaac had always admired Esau. And as the custom was in those days, it was the, the prerogative of the father to bless the firstborn. And when the firstborn is blessed, they are blessed. So he knew that he was coming to the end of his life. He, he told Esau, Go and fetch some wild meat and make me the stew that you know I like. So Esau went and did as his father said. But while he was out, the mother overheard. She had liked Jacob. And she and Jacob concocted this scheme. She says, hear what? I am going to prepare something. You go and get some of the... Um, the fur from some of those animals you killed before, put them on you. 
so that you will smell like Esau. <laughs> so she baked the wild game just like the father liked it. Mr. Jacob comes in. Well, I imagine he probably adjusts his voice. Hey, father, I reach, I reach back. Father say, but you come back so quick. <laughs> say, yeah, the Lord gave me, the Lord gave me favor. <laughs> The father said, but you're smelling like Esau, but you're sounding like Jacob. Come closer. <laughs> so when he came closer, the father can't see properly. He touched him and he said, ah, he feel the hair because Esau was a hairy man. So he felt the hair from the animal husk, uh, husk you know. So he said, okay. So he had the, the meal and then he blessed Jacob. Shortly after that now, Esau comes back in. He says, Father, I've returned. So the father jump up. You return? Who is this? He says, Esau, come, look, see. Is Esau your firstborn? He said, but I just bless you. He said, no, it was Jacob. And then Esau cried. He said, Father, but bless me too, bless me. He said, I, I already blessed Jacob and he's blessed. He said, he, Esau said, is there any more blessing? He said, no, you will be blessed too, but not like Jacob. The blessing of the firstborn was a special blessing. And so Esau, when he realized that Jacob swindled him for the second time, this is the second time he swindled him. The first time he had swindled him out of his birthright. Esau vowed a vow. He said, as soon as my father exit this life, I'm going to take off your neck, Mr. Jacob. The motherhood. And she said, Jacob, you see this? I don't want to lose your father and you at the same time. You need to get out of here. And so Jacob fled. So now we encounter Jacob. He's running away for his very life. Right? And he came upon this place. And I believe that as he fled, he was led to this place. It says the, he happened to stop there because the sun was setting. And this is how God leads us. What appears to be coincidence is really divine providence. God is leading you. You know, you are in this ministry, you are in this church, not by chance. God led you here. Amen? Because God has certain things he wants to deposit in your life. And so jo uh, Jacob just happened to take a sleep. And unknown to him, he was walking in the exact place that God wanted him to be. A place of divine revelation and insight. And sometimes God will allow crises to come into our lives. Not to destroy us, but to drive us to certain places. These places are not just physical places, but they can be places in your journey with the Lord. Boundary points along our journey with him. Jacob was driven to such a place because of this crisis. That had suddenly engulfed his life. A crisis that he himself manufactured. And what I want to say here is that our God is so gracious. That even when we mess up. And mess up big time. Yeah. You damage people. You damage relationships. God doesn't abandon us. Yeah. People may discard and abandon us because of our feelings. And sometimes they're justified. Because we make a mess. That's what Jacob did. Not once, but twice. He swindled his brother. He was at fault. But what we see here is the grace of God. Even when you mess up. Even when you make a mistake. God doesn't bail on us. That's why it said that he is married to the backslider. He is the hound from heaven that pursues us. No matter where we go. That's why David in writing in Psalm 139 verse 8. He says, if I ascend into the heaven, you are there. 
If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. God is the hound of heaven that pursues us. He always tries to bring us back. He is with us. He doesn't allow anything that we experience in this life to go to waste. God is able to use even your failures, even your disappointments, to move you from places of difficulty to places of the supernatural. That's how God operates. He works in mysterious ways. His wonders to perform. And you may be in a difficult place now. But I want to let you know that that is the exact place that God wants you to be. You say, why? Because crisis has a way of driving us to not just certain places, but to God himself. I need to repeat that. Crisis has a way of driving us, not just to certain places, but to God himself. Sometimes the only way that God could get your attention is through the door of crisis. That is the time that you find your voice. That is the time that you begin to cry out to God. And it's precisely at those times that God visits us, reveals himself to us. This is what happened to Jacob. And it leads me to the second point I want to make this morning. And it's this. God will bring us to certain places to encourage us with a vision of our destiny. God will not just drive us to certain places, but he's going to bring us to encourage us with a vision of our destiny. God will always give you a picture or a snapshot of what he wants to do in your life before he actually does it. You say, why does God do that? The main reason he does that is to focus our attention on the vision and to encourage us to keep moving forward. The Bible says without a vision, the people perish. So God will give you a vision. He'll give you a preview. This is what I want to do in your life. You remember what he said about Jeremiah? He says from the foundation of the world, Jeremiah, I saw you. And he gave him a picture. He says, you... Jeremiah, you are called to be a prophet to the nations. Do not be afraid. He says, they will try to silence you. But don't be afraid. I am with you. He gave him a picture of what is to come. And God will drive us. He will use our crises to drive us to certain places. To give us revelation and insight about what he wants to do in our lives. This is what we see in the Jacob experience. And we will face many trials and setbacks in this life. In fact, life sometimes dishes out crises. And these crises sometimes have a way of beating us down. Sometimes they get discouraged. You don't even want to go to church. You don't want to pray. You feel like you could stay in the bed whole day. Sometimes that is how life deals with us and sometimes we get derailed this is the situation that was facing Jacob he had to uproot himself from his hometown and get out of there because his life was at stake and as he fled I'm sure he would have had so many thoughts going through his mind I really mess up this time boy you know, it would have been easy for him to become discouraged and disillusioned. Because everything that he had done up to that point was to help him gain an upper hand in life. Yet, all of his efforts amounted to zero. He was forced to flee. And it's precisely at these times that we become discouraged. We've all faced. We've all been like Jacob on the run. Sometimes we're not running physically, but we're running in our minds. We're trying to escape our failures, our failings, our disappointments. 
and we become discouraged. Remember Elijah? He had preached his best sermon. Called down fire from heaven. Called down rain from heaven. He even outran a chariot. And yet, for all of his zeal, all of his exploits, there was no change in the palace at Jezreel. Where change was expected and anticipated, there was none. Instead, there was a defiant and rebellious revolt against the man of God. Jezebel says, By sundown, I'm going to take your life. Just as you have killed these prophets, I'm going to take your life, Elijah. And so the man of God was forced to flee for his very life. So what did God do? God used the occasion of Elijah's discouragement to encourage his prophet. The God that we serve, he's a God of encouragement. Amen. He encourages us. And God redirected Elijah towards his purpose and final mission. He gave him a picture of his future to encourage him to keep moving forward. God said, retrace your steps, Elijah. I didn't send you here. Retrace your steps and go and anoint three people. He still had work to do. God told him, you have to anoint Haziel to be king over Syria. You have to anoint Jehu to be king over Israel. And you have to anoint Elisha to be your successor. God knows how to keep us on track. Even after we've become discouraged. He knows exactly how to put us back to work. You see, he brings us to certain places to encourage us with a vision of our destiny. That's what he does. God is leading us. You have to remember that we are on a pilgrimage. We are journeying with God. We are moving with God. He's leading you. That's why the psalmist says, He leads me beside the still waters. He causes me to lie down in green pastures. What a mighty God we serve. He's always leading us. He's always guiding us. He's always navigating us through the twists and the turns of life. And so He brings us to certain places to refresh, to revive, to encourage us. To redirect us. That's the God that we serve. That crisis that you are in. God is in that crisis with you. He's leading you. He's guiding you. He's ordering your steps. He brings us to places. Where he could encourage us. Where he could give us a preview of what he wants us to do. This is what he did in the life of J Jacob. God gave Jacob a picture of his future in the dream. And this was a strange dream. Imagine you lying down in a strange place. And all of a sudden you see this big ladder stretching from the earth all the way up into heaven. You know what I find interesting? It says that he saw all the way up into heaven because he saw God standing over that ladder. What a powerful dream. What a powerful vision. And then, he did not just see a big ladder and God standing over the ladder. But the Bible says that angels were ascending and descending on the ladder. I imagine Jacob is wondering, what kind of dream is this boy? Angels going up and down. God is at the top speaking. And Jesus would later identify himself as that ladder in John 1.51. When he was talking with Nathaniel. So this crisis in Jacob's life. It wasn't a dead end. You know sometimes you feel you come to a dead end. Sometimes you feel you come to the end. What are we going to do now boy? Trouble is like the children of Israel. Fleeing from Egypt. They came to a dead end. They come right up on the edge of the Red Sea. They can't go to the left because they are mountains. They can't go to the right. Mountains. And then when they look back, who could they see? Pharaoh and the Egyptians pursuing. And in front of them is the mighty Red Sea. What are we going to do? 
I want to say to you that that crisis, sometimes you feel like you're hemmed in. You're in a crisis. You're hemmed in. I want to say to you that that crisis is not a dead end. That crisis is not a full stop. That's just a pause. That's just a period. Because God is able to turn that crisis into a door. You hear what I'm telling you? He could turn that crisis into a door. He's the God who creates rivers in the wilderness. He's the God who creates an open pathway in the middle of the Red Sea. That's the God that we serve. He's a supernatural God. Supernatural. And so I want to say to you that your crisis may appear to be a dead end in the natural, but in the spiritual, it's a door that is going to lead to a fresh encounter with God, a divine encounter. Notice what happened to Jacob. It says, he Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He saw the Lord standing above the ladder speaking to him. God is a speaking God. And God doesn't waste his words. Eh? He's a God who is very economical with his words. So when God is speaking, pay attention. What was God telling him? God revealed three things to Jacob through this dream. The first, he reminded him of who he was. He is the God of his father Abraham and Isaac. In other words, God is saying, I am the God of your forefathers. I am the God of covenant. I made a covenant with your forefathers. I am the covenant keeping God. God was identifying himself as the covenant keeping God who keeps his promises. And God will bring you to certain places to remind you of who he is. The God of covenant. The God who keeps his promises that he made to you in a prior season. That's what God wants you to know. He's a God who keeps his word. He's not the son of man that he should lie. He is a God of integrity. And so if God said it, he will do it. You need to believe that. The second thing he revealed to Jacob is what he wanted to do in his life. He said to him, the land that you are sleeping on, I have given to you and your descendants. And I have not just given you land, but I will multiply your seed exceedingly. And bring you back into this land. Now remember, at the time that he was having this dream, he was a single man. He was a man on the run. He didn't even have a place to stay. He was squatting in that place. And here it is, God is saying to him, I'm going to give you land, and I'm going to give you a family. Because that is linked to your purpose. That is the promise I made to your father's. Abraham and Isaac. And through you, Jacob, swindler, schemer, all the families in the earth will be blessed. You see how good God is? Yes. God is in one night turning around a schemer, a supplanter, into a man who is blessed and highly favored. He is rewriting his past and giving him a new future. You see how good God is? God could use your crisis to rewrite your past, erase your past, and give you a new future. It doesn't matter what you did in the past, what failings you made, what sins you did. The God that we serve, he's a God of second chances. He's a God that is able to erase the mistakes of the past and give you a brand new future. That is what he did for Mr. Jacob. He turned him from a schema into a prince. That's what God did. 
And God says, Behold, I will be with you. I am going to be with you until everything that I've said comes to pass. So God is not about to abandon you. He's using the crisis to drive you to a place of open doors. A place that he could catapult you into your purpose and destiny. That is what God is doing. The third and final thing he revealed to Jacob is how he was going to do it. How was God going to give him the land and multiply his seed and give him all this favor? How was God going to do that? And this ladder was the means that God was going to use to usher in these blessings and favor into Jacob's life. And indeed, it is a prophetic picture of how God ushers in the blessings and the favor because we are sons of Abraham. We are sons of Jacob. Yes. Spiritual sons. And so in the same way that God was revealing to Jacob how he was going to bless him, this is how God operates today. Through this ladder. Because this ladder represents the ministry of angels. That's why the writer of Hebrews in Hebrews 1.14 informs us that angels are ministering spirits sent forth to minister to those who would inherit salvation. That's why we're not supposed to worship angels. Angels are your, almost like your waiters, your servants. They are sent to minister. That's why we saw them ascending the ladder and we know that ladder is Jesus Christ. The finished work of Jesus Christ. Because of the finished work of Jesus Christ. He has bridged the gap. The bridge between heaven and earth. That was broken in the garden of Eden. Jesus restored that linkage. And so that linkage. It was a prophetic picture that God was showing Jacob. Jesus is the ladder that links heaven and earth. Through his finished work. And upon that ladder. The finished work of Jesus Christ. Angels ascend. What are they ascending with? They are ascending with your prayers. They are ascending with your requests. They are ascending with your praise and worship. Now you understand why. Jesus said men ought always to pray and not give up. Because your prayers literally energize angels. It releases the angels. So if you're not praying, what's, what do you think is going to happen? Angels can't ascend. And as they ascend, they descend. What are they descending with? The answers. They are descending with the answers. This is the mechanism, this is the means that God uses to bring blessings and favor into our lives. Through the ministry of angels. That's why when Daniel was praying for those 21 days for the children of Israel, the people of Israel, there was an interception. The angel was about to descend, but he was blocked in the heavenlies. Remember that? He was withheld. He said he was withheld. And they had to call him back up. Now there's a real battle taking place, you know. Because Satan is the prince of the power of the air. There are three heavens. There is the, 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 the earthly heaven that we see. There is the second heaven. The second heaven is the, the throne of the devil and his demons. They occupy the second heaven. And then the third heaven is where God is. The throne of God is. So understand that this ladder is from the earth. It is going through the first, the second and the third heaven. Right? But for the answers to come down from the third heaven, it has to pass through the second heaven to get to the first heaven. And so when the angel was descending, coming through the second heaven, he was intercepted by this principality. And Daniel had to pray. You know what caused that angel to break through eventually? Was the prayers of Daniel. Because he persisted in prayer. 
So angels are ministering spirits. This is the mechanism that God uses to bless and to bring favor. So sometimes the reason why your prayers are not being answered is because the angels are being intercepted. They are being held up. That's why we have to keep praying. Keep praying. Don't stop praying. Because the angels are ascending and descending. And they are energized by your prayers. Amen? So this is how prayers get answered. Through the ministry of angels. You say, well, why did God reveal that to Jacob? Why does he reveal that to us? It's because he wants to encourage us to keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. God is giving us insight into the spirit realm. He knows that we will become discouraged from time to time. And so he gives us a picture of what he's doing in our lives. He sends angels with answers to our prayers so that we can continue to move forward. And this leads me to the third and final point I want to make this morning as we wrap this message up. And it's this. God brings us to certain places, not just to encourage, but to encounter the supernatural. You are where you are because God wants to have or give you a divine encounter with the supernatural. We have to remember that this God that we're talking about is a supernatural God. And so he's going to lead us into supernatural encounters from time to time. Remember Moses and the burning bush? The bush that was not consumed. That was a supernatural encounter. Why does God lead us into supernatural encounters? In our word, to transform us. If we are to step into our destiny, if we are to fulfill our divine calling, we're going to have to change our thinking. You see, much of our thinking is carnal, is of the flesh, is of the senses. But the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 8 verse 7 that to be carnally minded is death and to be spiritually minded is life. We have to change from carnal minded thinking to spiritual thinking because the carnal mind, the mind of the flesh, the mind of the senses cannot perceive spiritual things. The Bible says they are foolishness to him. And furthermore, the carnal mind is at enmity. It is hostile towards the things of God. We cannot wrestle the carnal mind into submission. No, we have to switch from the carnal mind to the spirit mind. The mind of Christ. So if you are carnal in your thinking, you'll never step into the things that God has ordained for you. That's why Jesus says, repent, change your mind, change the way you think. And this is why God brings us to certain places so that we can be changed in our thinking. In fact, God is so committed to your future that he is going to invade your present with crisis if that is what it takes to lead you to certain places. Places that will lead you to become transformed. You see, experiencing the supernatural is necessary to bring about this transformation. After Moses encountered the burning bush, he was not the same. He was changed. After Paul encountered the Lord on the Damascus road, he was not the same. He was changed by the supernatural. And the same with Jacob. After he had this dream, he was changed. He was transformed. Did you notice what he said after he got up from the dream? In verse 16 and following, he says, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. Sometimes God will lead you to places and you don't know that the Lord is there. He's waiting. It says that he was afraid. 
He said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. Jacob had stumbled into the house of God and he didn't even know it. It took a supernatural dream to open up his eyes to the spiritual realities. He was changed from that moment on. You know why he was changed? Because he had stepped into the gate of heaven. His eyes were now opened to the supernatural nature and character of God. And because of this one encounter, he was set on a path to finish strong. And if you read in the very next chapter, it says that God led him to another place where he met his future wife, Rachel. And the rest, as they say, is history. <laughs> exactly what God revealed to him in a dream is what came to pass in his life. This encounter here in Bethel was the turning point. The crisis was the turning point in his life. And I want to say to you that that crisis that you are in is a turning point in your life. God is going to use that crisis. To lead you into the supernatural. This is what he did for Jacob. And Jacob moved from a place of eviction. Remember? He was evicted. His mother told him, get out of here. He moved from a place of eviction. To a place of enlightenment. When he came into the house of Bethel. He was enlightened. He got a vision of the Lord. A vision of his future. Enlightenment. And then he moved to a place of empowerment. Because of the enlightenment, he was empowered to move forward. And all of that crisis now was forgotten. He was a man on a mission. He was a man on a purpose. And that is what God wants to do for you. Yes, if we're putting our hands together for the Lord. The God that we serve. He's a God of spectacular turnarounds. He can and does turn around what the enemy intends for evil for your good. He can turn it around. And as I conclude this morning. You may be facing a crisis now. And you can't see anything good coming from it. In fact all you see is dry places. Difficult places, hard places. And like Jacob, you can't see anything good. But I stop by to tell you that God has some other ideas. What you perceive to be an ordinary place is really an extraordinary supernatural place. Because crisis has a way of blinding us to spiritual realities. But God is greater than your crisis. I said, God is greater than your crisis. Amen. He says, that crisis that you're in right now is a tool that I am using to drive you to a certain place. A place of enlightenment. A place of encounter. We're going to meet the God of the supernatural. When you have stepped into that supernatural place, you'll discover that things are not what they seem. Somebody here needs to know that things are not what they seem. You may think that you're running away from pain. When in reality you're running towards purpose. You may think that you're hitting a dead end. When in reality you're hitting a door to the supernatural. You may think that you're washed up. When in reality you are about to step into a new season. Of purpose and destiny. Because with God, all things are possible. Amen. Let's bow our heads this morning. Father, we give you praise. We give you honor and glory for your word to our hearts. Thank you, Lord, that your word is still powerful and efficacious. Thank you, Lord, that your word is going to lift us out of that miry clay. Mighty God, we give you the praise. If there's someone here, 
You've never committed your life to the Lord. You want to do so this morning. You know that you're outside of a relationship with the Lord. I want you to lift your hands. We're going to see it. We're going to pray with you and for you. Is there anyone here in the service like that? Hallelujah. All right. Could we all stand this morning? And the spirit of the Lord is here. I sense there are some of you here. You are discouraged. Like Jacob, you may have been on the run. You're in a place of pain, of difficulty, of setback, of heartbreak, of heartache. You're in a difficult place. And you can't see what good is going to come out of this. I came here to tell you that God wants to turn your place of crisis into a door that leads to the supernatural. If you are here like that this morning, you need prayer, you need a touch from the Lord, come to the front. We're going to pray with you. We're going to pray with you, mighty God. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, you can come to the front. Anyone, you sense that this word fell in your garden. And you know that the Lord wants to take you to another level. Come to the front. We're going to pray with you. Hallelujah. Pray. Hallelujah. Sister Diane, lead us in an appropriate song. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just worship the Lord. Just bask in the presence with uplifted hands. Let every hand be lifted in the presence of Almighty God. Let's magnify Him. Let's glorify Him. Block out everything that is not of God. Great are you. Great are you, Lord. Come on, sing it. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Hallelujah. Great are you, Lord. Come on, sing it like you mean it. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Holy, holy God Almighty. With uplifted hands. Come on, lift up your hands. It's a privilege to worship you. Hallelujah. Maker of all universe. It's an honor just to stand before you. With a grateful heart, I lift my hands to you. Proclaiming, Lord, you reign. With a grateful heart, I lift my hands to you. Proclaiming, Lord, you reign. Great, great, great. Great are you, Lord. Greatly to be praised, greatly to be praised, Father, you reign, great are you, Lord, you're greatly to be praised, greatly to be praised, Father, you reign, come on again, great are you, Lord, you are greatly to be praised, greatly to be praised, Father, you reign, great are you, Lord, you are greatly to be praised.
praised. Will you truly praised? Father, you reign. Come on, one more time. Great great are you, Lord? You are greatly to be praised. Greatly to be praised. Father, you reign. Great are you, Lord? Brother Joe. Great are you, Lord. Shondorobo Koshata. Yandorobo se teke shandorobo sa. Yekerebe shenderebe shato. Yandoroko soto. Every crisis right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare is being turned into a door to the supernatural. Mighty God, I pray that you will open his eyes to see visions, visions of the supernatural, visions of what you are going to do in his life, mighty God. Let the spirit of encouragement rest upon Brother Richard right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be a new joy. Let there be a new effervescence. Mighty God falling fresh upon him right now. Spirit of the Sovereign Lord fall fresh. Fall fresh upon Brother Richard right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every obstacle. Every weight. Every care. Everything that is mitigating against your advance. We destroy right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. It is done. It is done. God says brother Richard. It is well. It is well with your soul. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Great are you Lord. Great are you Lord. Great are you, Lord. More of your presence, Lord. More of your glory. More of your glory. More of your grace. In the mighty name of Jesus. More of your grace. More of your grace. More of your glory. Let the weight of your glory rest upon your daughter, mighty God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every obstacle. Every hindrance we pull down in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Supernatural encounters. Supernatural visions. Supernatural dreams. We're calling it forth into your life right now. Mighty God, open her spiritual eyes to see into the supernatural what you are doing in her life. Mighty God, I thank you, Lord, that you are ordering her steps. You are bringing order to her steps, mighty God. Mighty God, I hear the Lord say that there's a spirit of boldness. There's a spirit of fearlessness, a spirit of courage that is coming upon you right now. A fearless spirit, a bold spirit, a strong spirit is being released from the Lord right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Strength in your body. Healing and wholeness. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It is done. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Great are you, Lord. 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 You are great. You are great. You are doing great things. Greater things will be done in your life and through your life in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Supernatural encounters, supernatural vision, supernatural dreams. We're calling it forth in the mighty name of Jesus. 
In the mighty name of Jesus, let your spirit fall fresh. Let the weight of your glory rest upon your daughter. Lord, turn around that crisis into a supernatural door. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, it is done. It is done. It is done. Supernatural encounters, dreams and visions. We're calling it forth. We're calling it forth in the mighty name of Jesus. Supernatural encounters. Lord, turn every crisis into a door. A door of favor. A door of blessing. In the mighty name of Jesus. It is done. It is done in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, let your comforting presence. Let your comforting presence rest on the lap right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. It is done. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Where are you, Lord? Where are you, Lord? Greater things are coming. Greater things are coming, says the Lord. Greater things are coming. You are being prepared. You are being tried. You are being tested. In the mighty name of Jesus. God says, I'm with you. I've never left your side. I am with you. I'm going to strengthen these hands. These hands will do exploits to the kingdom of God. These feet will do exploits to the kingdom of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Mighty God, I thank you that you're going to open up his spiritual eyes to see into the realm of the supernatural. We're calling for dreams and visions, Lord. Mighty God, I pray that you will catapult him into his purpose and destiny. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. No weapon. No weapon formed against you will prosper. And every tongue that rises up in judgment, I condemn. In Jesus' name. You are loosed right now from every spirit of infirmity. From every mindset, every thought, every imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of Jesus Christ. We pull down in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I loose every chain, every fetter right now. I use the sword of God to cut asunder every chain, every tie. Every form of bondage and restriction, we break it off of your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Every covenant that was made with the enemy, we smash into pieces in the name of Jesus. We apply the blood of Jesus to your life, to your mind, to your thoughts, to your body right now. The blood of Jesus is effective. Mighty God, loose him, set him free in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, you are free. I declare that you are free. Every contrary spirit, every unclean spirit that is operating in your life, I terminate your assignment and I command you, come out of this body right now in Jesus name every unclean spirit out in Jesus name loose him now in Jesus name loose his mind in Jesus name every contrary spirit in Jesus name I terminate your assignment I command you leave this body and never return in Jesus name in Jesus name in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus 
in the mighty name of Jesus in the name of Jesus it is done in Jesus name God bless you hallelujah hallelujah Now in the name of Jesus, I speak healing into these eyes and restoration. I speak a creative miracle. I command your eyes to be recreated right there in the sockets, to be reformed. Every part of the eyes that is not functioning, I command you to be restored to normal function. I call for 2020 vision through these eyes right now in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your healing power that is flowing through these eyes right now. In Jesus' name. Receive your healing in Jesus' name. You are healed. You are restored right now in Jesus' name. Precious Holy Spirit fall fresh upon this man of God right now in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name thank you Lord thank you for doing it in Jesus name in Jesus name hallelujah you want prayers hallelujah mighty God we give you praise thank you for your servant thank you for your hand upon her life Thank you, Lord, that you're ordering her steps. Thank you, Lord, that you are turning around every crisis into an opportunity, into a door to the supernatural. Let there be a supernatural flow from the very throne of heaven into her life, into her experience, into her family, mighty God. Mighty God, we pray for an acceleration of purpose Where and destiny. In the mighty name of Jesus, Where we declare it done. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Where are you, Lord? Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Greater things in store for you, Sister Diane. Every trial, every test is an opportunity to go higher in God. That's what God is saying. Every trial, every test, every challenge, every crisis is an opportunity to go higher and deeper with the Lord. Mighty God, let your grace, let your strength Rest upon Sister Diane Great and her family right now. You, Let there be breakthroughs, Lord. Breakthroughs Great in the realm of the spirit. You, Mighty Lord. God, open Great her spiritual eyes you, to see and understand what you're doing in her life. Mighty God, Great give her wisdom, you, guidance Lord. in Jesus' name. Give her hinds feet, Lord, Where to run and pursue the vision for her life. Where In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stretch forth your hands to this servant of almighty God Father we give you praise we give you honor Lord you see and know what the challenge is what the concern is and there's no there's nothing that is too great for you to do Lord you are able to heal you are able to deliver you are able to set free right now so, Lord, whatever the concern is, 
pray that you'll meet brother Sham at the point of his need mighty God Lord that same spirit that for, fell upon Saul and converted Saul to Paul let that spirit fall upon brother Sham right now in the mighty name of Jesus I break every shackle every chain of the enemy right now every shackle upon your mind every shackle upon your body every shackle upon the soul and the spirit we break in jesus name in the mighty name of jesus let your power rest upon him lord to heal to deliver to set free in the mighty name of jesus in the mighty name of Jesus. Touch him, Lord, from the inside out. Touch him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, Lord. Touch as only you can, mighty God. Heal as only you can, mighty God. Deliver as only you can, mighty God. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare it done right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Good to see you. God bless you. God bless you. Bless you. you. Hallelujah. Could we give God a high note of praise and worship? Father, we thank you for your word to our hearts, our hearing this morning. I pray that you will seal this word by your spirit and through your blood. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we're going to wait on you now for the tithes and the designated offerings. Praise the Lord. Our worship team will lead us.